Okay, we'll get started. Um, welcome everyone to today's webinar on Search Ads 360. Um, just a little bit of background really first before we get into the, to the meat of today's subject. My name is Ryan Jones. I'm the Assistant Head of Paid Media at Search Laboratory. Um, just very briefly for anyone that's not uh, very familiar with the company. We're an integrated global digital marketing agency of around 150 people split between offices in the UK and the US. In practical terms, this means that we can support clients in all stages of the online user journey. Uh, this includes SEO, paid media, programmatic advertising, we do some social media and digital strategy as well. And we're able to do all of that globally because we've got an in-house team of multilingual native uh, speakers. So a little bit of housekeeping before we get started properly. I'm expecting today's webinar for to last for around 30 minutes or so. If you've got any questions as we're going through, then please uh, send them in to us via the chat box at the side of the screen. And if we've got a bit of time at the end, I'll go through those and answer what I can. Um, as mentioned, I'm the assistant head of paid media. Paid media for us encompasses PPC, programmatic advertising, so that's display and paid social activities, and also marketplaces. But from uh, for my role personally, probably 95% of my time is dedicated to PPC activities, and that's why I'm the one that's talking to you today. So we'll start with the the basics uh, for those that are completely new to Search Ads 360. Um, Search Ads 360 is part of uh, the Google marketing platform, which is Google's uh, broader packages solutions designed for larger and enterprise level businesses. And within Google marketing platform, um, there's a few sub products uh, and that includes a few paid premium versions of tools that you, you might already be familiar with, some of the, the free versions. So for example, um, a lot of you I'm sure are already using Google Analytics uh, as in the free version, the paid version, Analytics 360, that is one of the products within Google Marketing Platform. Today, obviously we're talking about Search S360, um, which is the, uh, the tool that uh, allows us to manage uh, uh, search and shopping PPC campaigns. Um, also just within this this platform is the display and video 360 and that's kind of the the equivalent platform which you'd use if you're managing uh, big display activities. Um, one important thing to note before anything else is that uh, Search Ads 360 it's not an alternative to Google Ads. Um, I'm sure a lot of you might already be using Google Ads to manage your PPC activities. If you were to start using Search Ads 360, that's not an alternative. So Search Ads 360 essentially acts in a similar way to how Kenshu or Marin might be integrated with your campaigns, if, you, if any of you use those to uh, as a bid management solution, for example. So Search Ads 360 would sit on top of your, uh, uh, on top, um, of your other platforms, you'd plug in your Google accounts to those, and it's just kind of a way of supplementing what you're already doing with some additional tools and additional functionality. Uh, and it's kind of down to you exactly how you use it. So some people, once they're using Search S360, they'll spend probably 95% of their time optimizing their campaigns in the Search S360 platform and not actually go into the Google account all that often. but other people might, if, if you've been using Google Ads for a good few years, you might already be really comfortable with that interface. You might feel more confident working there and using the Google Ads offline editor, in which case you might spend 95% of your time still in Google Ads and only come into Search S360 to configure new features and adjust settings, for example. So you can kind of uh, get as into the weeds of it as you really want to, depending on your comfort level. Um, I'm going to spend the bulk of today talking about some of the different features um, the, the, some of the main benefits that we see. Um, the, the kind of recapped here, the main ones I'll be talking about today will be the advanced auto bidding technologies, um, the, some of the inventory management tools, which are really good for uh, campaigns where you're dealing with 
particularly large product inventories. I'll talk about some of the budget and forecasting tools, um, the multi platform management aspect of search as 360 and there's a couple of other points that i might touch on briefly as we're going through as well if we've got time first off the the multi-platform management aspect so search as 360 it's obviously it's a google tool it's google search as 360 but that doesn't mean we're limited just to using it for our google ads accounts uh, it's quite common for our clients that will be uh, running PPC activity on Google Ads and Bing Ads. And for some of our international clients, we might be using Yahoo Japan, or if we're, we've got some Chinese activity, we might use Baidu. And each of those platforms can be plugged into Search as 360. Um, and there's a few benefits of that. One is simply the efficiency of having everything in one place rather than having to log into Google and then Bing and then Baidu to see how my campaigns are doing. I can view everything in one place, um, which I mean, yeah, it it's efficient just having everything there. It's also much easier because most of us are mostly familiar with the Google Ads interface because we're, we're using that all the time the Baidu interface, the Yahoo Japan interface, even the Bing interface, we're not, most of us aren't in there every day. So you might be less familiar with the interface. Um, whereas having everything in one place means you don't have to worry too much about the ins and outs of how, of how each of the platforms has its own uh, slight quirks. It, but it also means that each of these platforms can benefit from Google's um, leading technology i think we'd, we'd all probably agree that google has put the most investment into its technology particularly when it comes to um, machine learning and the bidding technologies which i'll come on to shortly um, and using search as 360 means that you can capitalize on that technology even more by making sure that your bing campaigns or your yahoo japan campaigns are also benefiting from that technology um, so it's kind of leveling the playing field a little bit uh, and allowing you to have more of a, a unified strategy uh, rather than kind of having to do one thing on Google and then make the best of what you can do on Bing, which has its own um, bidding technology, for example, but it might it, it might not work in quite the same way. Um, so it's, yeah, it, there's kind of multiple benefits that come from uh, this fact alone. Moving on to the machine learning, which I've just mentioned briefly, um, Google has invested hundreds of millions of, of pounds over the last few years in artificial intelligence and machine learning. And uh, I mean, they have their fingers in lots of pies. So they, they, they are using it in um, medical research and scientific research and there's military applications. But what, what we care about is how it manifests itself in um, the, the PPC tools. And a lot of Google's um, automated bidding strategies, bidding algorithms now are underpinned by Google's machine learning technology. Um, and all that really means, I suppose, because machine learning, it, it sounds like a little bit of a almost meaningless buzzword sometimes. So just to recap on what I actually mean by machine learning, it's simply that Google, as we all know, is collecting a lot of data on us and how we're using it all the time. So it's collecting a lot of different signals of intent, such as the search terms that we're using, our physical location, the devices that we're using to search, the time of day, our browsing history, other forms of advertising that we might have engaged with, um, information that it can infer about our demographics. So Google's collecting all this data all the time um, and it's using those with appropriate weightings, which it's kind of learning more about and adjusting all the time to predict the likelihood that a particular user at a particular time is likelihood is likely to go on to convert. Um, and this is something that it would really would be impossible to do manually, um, partly because there are so many signals and it's just crunching the numbers and crunching the data is difficult enough, but also we don't have access to the, the same depth of data that Google does. We don't have access to um, like a user's browsing history, for example. So for all, the will in the world, Google's bidding technology is always going to be a step ahead of what we could do manually. 
Um, so, yeah, auto bidding in general is one of the strengths of Search Ads 360 that we would tend to focus on. Um, as I've, I've already talked about, it's, it's based on um, their machine, to, machine learning technology, which uh, is generally recognized as way ahead of any of its uh, rivals. Um, I'll talk in a minute about the, the flexibility when it comes to setting up your bid strategies. There is a lot of choice and a lot of flexibility in terms of what you can do to ensure that Google is optimizing towards uh, your KPIs and your internal business goals. Um, as mentioned with the, the cross uh, platform management, this the auto bidding technology allows you to have a unified approach across your different campaigns, so Google, Bing, etc. Um, so to launch into some of the options, um, if any of you have used um, any form of automated bidding strategies before, whether that's on Google Ads or a, a third party product such as Marin, you'll be familiar with the basic strategies. So for example, in, in this screenshot, we can see uh, that this, you've got the standard conversion, um, conversion goal target. So for example, for uh, a travel client might choose to target campaigns based on uh, the CPA, cost per acquisition of people that are downloading a brochure and any e-commerce clients more likely to focus on ROAS or, or cost of sale. The, the standard functionality is as you would expect, whether that is yeah, CPA, ROAS, maximizing conversions, maximizing revenue. Um, and these strategies uh, would apply to any of your search or shopping campaigns. Um, You've also got the option, if you want to, of allowing Search as 360 to also set your um, different bid adjustments. So as well as handing over the, the control of your, your keyword or your shopping bids, you can allow it to set your device bid adjustments or your location bid adjustments on top of that. And we would generally recommend allowing, uh, allowing it to do that. Otherwise, you kind of get into the situation where Google is auto bid into your keywords, you're independently trying to work out your location bid adjustments and there's a danger of conflict. So I think it's generally safer if you're going down the automated route to go fully down the route and, and trust Google. That's what we tend to do. We tend to see really good results from it. Um, so th this is just an example. We, we can see we've got this set up to target a 350% uh, ROAS for an example, e-commerce client. You've got the option here of deciding what you actually want to use as your ideal conversion source. So it can be quite flexible here, depending on uh, your existing setup before you start using Search Service 360. So in the simplest example, you might simply choose to import goals or conversions directly from Google Ads. If you've already got what you need set up there, you could import those to Search Ads 360 and use that as the, the primary conversion that you're going to optimize towards. That might be the simplest, but it's not always going to be appropriate. For example, if you're using, if you've got both Google and Bing campaigns um, as part of your strategy, then it's not going to be appropriate to just use Google Ads conversions. So instead, you might choose to import from uh, Google Analytics goals instead. There are still some limitations to that if you've got a particularly complex analytics setup that involves multiple different domains, and that might not quite work. Um, so the, the most flexible option would be uh, Floodlight, which is Search as 360's own conversion tracking methodology. Either way, there will be a solution for you here, and you're not necessarily uh, limited to just one, so you might choose to mix and match, as I'll mention in a moment. There's also flexibility in how you can layer on additional constraints into your bid strategy. So it might be that your primary goal that you're optimizing towards is a specific CPA target, but on top of that, you want to say that you've got a certain minimum or maximum bid that you want to set to make just make sure that Google's not going to get too 
carried away with itself, which it doesn't tend to, but you might want to just be a little bit conservative if you're trying this for the first time. Um, so set some maximum bids uh, just to keep spend under control in the short term. You can also set um, minimum or maximum positions if you want to kind of target uh, top positions above the organic results. You do have to be fairly realistic with what you're setting up here. So if you were to say that you want to always have your ad appear in position one, but also you don't ever want to pay more than a maximum bid of 10 pence, well, that might just be not, that might not be realistic. So sometimes you might set up a strategy and Google might not be able to hit your targets, but as long as you are realistic um, about what you're going in with, it, it tends to do a, realist, uh, a reasonable job at balancing the different objectives. Um, I br briefly mentioned this already, but what, what you can do rather than just saying that you want to use Google Analytics goals or Google Ads goals, you can use an advanced targeting strategy and actually mix and match a little bit. So for example, you might want to uh, track your sales or revenue using either Floodlight or Google Analytics and target that with a specific ROAS target. But you might also, on top of that, maybe you're tracking some uh, some store visit metrics or some click to call metrics in Google Ads um, and you want to associate those with a particular CPA target and you can actually combine the two of those into a single unified strategy if that's what works for you. Typically to be honest most of our clients they will have a one primary goal that they're really interested in but if you've got a more sophisticated um, strategy then the functionality is there to allow for that. Um, you can also get quite um, funky with how you combine different conversion types um, via formula columns. So just to highlight this with one example, the example on the left is from a client where we are tracking info request um, form fills, but also we're tracking people that are engaging with the site's chat functionality and also people that are making phone calls, but we know that they, they're they not all of equal value to, to this client. So we've applied some custom weightings. Um, so for example, a chat is only worth 40% of what a, a, a download is to this particular client. So we've applied some custom weightings. Um, and then we can use, actually use this within one of our bid strategies and, and say maximize the, the number of those that we're getting. Or the example on the right is a, a relatively simple example of how you might want to track not just uh, gross revenue, but maybe you want to apply some kind of profit margin to this. So in this example, uh, it's just a, a simple 30% profit margin that we're kind of assuming. Um, so there's various ways that you can adjust and manipulate and combine and weight different uh, conversion types into one unified strategy. And then one final pretty cool feature um, you don't have to use, it's, it's an, kind of an optional extra on top of the basic bid strategies, is that quite often a lot of our clients, they'll have not just a particular uh, CPA or revenue target that they want us to work towards, but they'll also have a quite strict monthly or quarterly budget that they need us to work towards. And Search Ads 360 actually gives us some pretty cool functionality to try and balance those two often conflicting objectives. Um, so we might set up, for example, a primary target of spend with a secondary target of, uh, I don't know, a 50 pound CPA, for example. Um, again, you need to be fairly realistic with how you're setting these up. If you say you want to spend a million pounds a month, but you only want a, a maximum CPA of five pounds, that just might not be realistic for your particular industry. So don't be surprised if uh, your targets aren't all hit. When you go into it um, with realistic goals, we find that it does do a, a quite a good job at balancing those, those two different objectives. And even if it's not, uh, even if it's actually practically not possible to, to hit all of your uh, different targets. These um, budget features, budget planning and forecasting features actually do a good job at, at least surfacing the insights to allow you to adjust your strategy. So 
if your CPA target is too strict to allow you to spend all your budget, you will at least get the notifications and the, the insight halfway through the month that maybe you're going to underspend, in which case maybe you can go back and revisit your targets and be a little bit more generous with, with the CPA target. Or if you're, if you're underperforming in terms of the revenue you were targeting, uh, then maybe that will give you the indication that you need to go back and be a little bit more generous with, with your budget. Um, so yeah, there's some pretty good flexibility there and pretty good insights that can kind of help you to, to manage your campaigns throughout the month. Moving on from bid strategies, for example, uh, for a moment, I want to talk about inventory management. So this is a campaign type which is fairly unique to, to Search Ads 360, I think. Uh, the closest thing in Google Ads would be dynamic search campaigns, but actually this is kind of a, several steps more advanced than that in terms of its flexibility and what, what it can do. Um, so what I'm talking about really with inventory management is a way to automatically build out your long tail keyword coverage and get really granular and up-to-date ad texts both uh, quickly and at scale. So these are really ideal for anyone that's got a particularly large or particularly changeable product inventory where prices are changing quickly or things are going in and out of stock. Um, this is really good either for retail clients, but also it works really well for um, travel clients as well. I'll go on to an example of that in a second. In the inventory management campaigns, they're all going to be driven by um, some kind of product feed. So I've got a, a, a simplified example here. Um, the feed, it might be, if you, if you are an e-commerce um, website owner, then this feed might just be the same one that you would already be using for Google Merchant Center uh, for your shopping ad campaigns. Um, but if you're in the travel sector, um, this can work just as well. Uh, you would just have to you might you would have to create a new feed possibly for this purpose. So the, the feed for a travel uh, website might include dimensions such as uh, room availability, room type, um, room from price, maybe availability, maybe flight dates, that kind of those kind of things. Um, and it's a very flexible campaign type. Um, you can kind of use it de uh, really depending how you want to. A, a classic example that we might use it for for a, a retail client in, the, in this particular example, we might use it simply to generate um, keywords for all of the unique product IDs and maybe combinations of brand and product IDs, um, which Individually, they would all be probably really low search volume um, and hard to keep on top of. And you might think, is it worth the effort of trying to keep on top of them when they're changing so often? Um, this is kind of plugging that gap and allowing you to get that really long tail um, keyword coverage. You might use it uh, to make sure that you've got coverage on all of your brands, uh, maybe all of your different product types. Um, so yeah, it can it can be flexible. Depending, it kind of depends on, I suppose, your resource. If you don't have the ability to spend loads of time building out individual keywords, then you might lean on this more, um, or you might just use it to maybe plug a few gaps for really product specific stuff, depending on kind of how you want it to work. Um, besides building out the the keywords in the first place, I think one of the one of the biggest strengths possibly is just how it can be used to make sure your ads, your ad text are, are always up to date. So uh, you might use it so that anyone searching for Seiko watches using this example, you would have an ad text that said uh, from 99 pounds, for example, or you could use it to show your biggest discount, or you could say the number of products in that particular range that are currently in stock. Um, and then if a product goes out of stock or a particular product category falls below a certain 
threshold uh, of availability, you might decide to automatically pause that campaign. So one example that I've used it for was for um, a shoe retailer and um, we set it up so that whenever a certain shoe was only available in uh, extra, extra large or extra small sizes, we would automatically pause that ad group. So you can be quite flexible in how you use this. Um, it does require having a feed built out um, in relatively good order, but there's also lots of uh, cool full, uh, rules and functionality within Search Ads 360 to help you to clean it up. So there's rules to automatically trim unnecessary punctuation, convert thing, convert terms into the right case, uh, fix singular and plural to make sure everything's consistent. So your feed doesn't have to be ideal, but it, it does, of course, need to be kind of up to date and as full as possible, as you would expect. Um, so, yeah, this allows you to kind of build campaigns that you you might plausibly be able to manually build out with manual keywords and ads, but that you wouldn't really be able to keep up to date. Um, you want your campaigns to uh, always be reflecting your latest offers and you don't want to have to go back and change your ad text every time a discount changes. Uh, you might want to have ad text that are shouting out about your free delivery, but if you've got uh, maybe a threshold for that free delivery, you could set up a rule so that you're only talking about the free delivery message if uh, someone has searched for a product that is over £50, for example. Um, you might want to automatically pause once you only have, um, if you only have less than, say, six of a certain item or six different Seiko watches in stock. Uh, the, the classic example would just be making sure that you've always got price in there or the, that the lowest available price for a particular range. Um, it also means you don't, you don't have to worry about um, URL changes because all the, the URLs are going to be coming directly from that feed. So it's kind of a, an additional uh, burden off your mind that your URLs are always going to be up to date. Um, so yeah, it, 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 it's a very flexible campaign type and it, it, it tends to work really well for both retail and travel clients, depending on your exact needs. Um, next, I just want to talk about a few of the, the integrations. Um, so with Search S360 being a Google product, um, as you might expect, it uh, naturally integrates with a lot of other Google um, products. So the first one is Data Studio. Just in case anyone's not familiar with Data Studio, this is Google's online reporting platform. Um, it allows you to build interactive reports and charts uh, really easily without any coding experience and it naturally um, has integrations that allows you to integrate uh, data from Google Analytics, uh, Google Ads, Google Sheets, etc. And also Search S360. Um, so while there is some reporting functionality within Search S360 itself, um, what we tend to find ourselves doing is actually building reports in Data Studio instead, um, unifying data from you've, you, the various um, advertising platforms that you've already got connected to uh, Search S360, sometimes supplemented with additional data from analytics um, as well, for example. Um, so this is just, a, a, a way of surfacing kind of the Search S360 PPC data in, in real time across all your accounts and also, something I've not mentioned, deduplicated across those accounts. Um, so this, this is in itself a, a one advantage of Search S360. So if you do have a quite a sophisticated setup with either multiple Google accounts or Google and Bing accounts, you want to make sure that you, you're not in danger of um, recording the same conversion twice if someone should uh, uh, should click on ads that are associated with multiple campaigns. Another integration would be Google Analytics 360. So anyone that's using Google Ads at present will be well aware that you can uh, connect your Google Ads and your Google Analytics accounts and that will allow you to view uh, 
Google click metrics within analytics. So you'd be able to view impression data, cost data within analytics, but it's pretty hard generally to view your Bing cost data or your Baidu impression data within analytics. It, it might be possible, but with a lot of dev work, certainly there's nothing out of the box. If you're using Search S360 and Google Analytics 360, though, um, all that is naturally surf surfaced um, just by linking the two accounts. So as you can see in this example, we've got a new reporting section which has all the different um, aspects of Google marketing platform. And it's just another way of unifying all your reporting. Um, if, you, if you've got your Google costs in analytics, it makes sense that you would also want to view your Bing costs in there and derived metrics such as um, like the, the ROAS on Bing campaign. So this is a really good way of doing it. I will point out that this is available for Google Analytics 360 rather than just the, the standard um, Google Analytics. And then finally, um, so as I mentioned up front, Search Ads 360, it's for managing your search and your shopping PPC campaigns. If you're also doing a lot of display activity, then you might find yourself using uh, display and video 360, which is one of the other products within the Google marketing platform stack. Um, another platform, uh, which I, I won't go into too much depth in because it could get uh, quite technical is campaign manager. So what you might quite reasonably want to do if you've, if you've got both search and display activities running is make sure that you do have visibility into the uh, the wider user journey. So you, you really want to have visibility on people that are viewing or clicking on your display activity uh, on your display ads and you want to see how many of those have come back later and clicked on your PPC campaigns. So uh, campaign manager would allow us to uh, again unify that reporting, see those uh, those more comprehensive user journeys. You can kind of take this to additional levels and um, integrate some organic visibility as well. I'm not going to go into that in any, any any detail today, but there's quite a lot you can do to make sure that you are factoring in all your different marketing um, activities. And when you're setting up your attribution models, um, you kind of get in all your all your activities consolidated within one place. And again, it's a way of deduplicating your tracking to make sure you're not uh, counting the same things twice. Um, so just to really wrap up for today, um, Search Ads 360, it's a great tool that we find really amplifies our paid search campaigns. And it does, it, it does that through a whole number of features, not limited to, to what I've talked about today. But um, the main uh, advantages we certainly see are the machine learning technology, which is um, far in advance of what's available on really any of its uh, competitors, um, such as Bing or Baidu. Um, that machine learning technology powers the obviously the, the, the bid uh, the bid strategies, which in themselves are actually really flexible and allows you to do qu quite a lot more that you wouldn't than you would be able to do in, say, Google Ads alone. Um, for some people, I would think just the fact that you can consolidate all of your different platforms in one place and the efficiencies that that can drive that in itself, I think, can be uh, reason enough to start using Search S360 and also, um, I guess capitalizing on the on Google's technology to power your other campaigns um, and certainly for retail and travel clients the inventory management uh, the, the feed based campaigns are a, a really strong way of um, taking your campaigns to the next level and making sure you do have that comprehensive um, keyword coverage so that is it for today unless anyone has any questions um, I've just got a few, uh, yeah, which I'll just go through now. Uh, so first off, yeah, I mentioned uh, that you can import a lot of the Search as 360 metrics and the, the cost data into Google Analytics 360. Um, so yeah, someone's asked, well, what can you import into the standard, the free version of Google Analytics? Um, 
so you can still integrate the two accounts so you can you can connect a google analytics account to a search as 360 account and that would allow you to still import any uh, google analytics goals or google analytics transactions and revenue figures into search as 360 and incorporate those into your bid strategies um, you wouldn't be able to push in the other direction though you wouldn't be able to see the details of your uh, your bing campaigns and your, your yahoo campaigns in analytics any more than you would uh, normally so you'd still be able to see your, your sessions in there you just wouldn't be able to see the, the clicks and the costs for that you would need to uh, get the premium Google Analytics 360. Um, another question on how the, the, the bidding strategies handle events um, such as Black Friday so it's a good question um, because there are times when uh, Although Google is collecting a lot of data, a lot of historical data on what's performing well, there are times when actually you do know best. Um, you might actually know a little bit more than Google. For example, if you've got a sale coming up, you might know that that's this this coming weekend is going to perform really well, um, and you want your bidding strategy to react to that in advance really you don't want to wait until a few days into sale and then have the, the bidding strategy try and catch up so there's a few um additional um kind of tools that you can use there so if you are using those budget planning tools that i talked about um then you can search as 360 that you want to spend more on certain days or certain certain weeks or certain just just for the weekend um rather than having Google try and balance budget equally. Yeah, you might want to weight it towards, towards certain days. There's a seasonality adjustments feature. If if you know that conversion rates really are going to shift significantly, so ahead of Black Friday, for example, you can program that in so that the, the system can anticipate it. Um, and on the reverse side, uh, you can also exclude data from review. So if you've just if you just had a, a flash sale over the weekend for example um that might kind of artificially have uh raised your conversion rates for a couple of days but you don't necessarily want google to be using that to uh assume that your performance for the next week is going to be equally good so you might choose to to blacklist those days this can also be quite useful if you ever have a, an issue with your tracking if it breaks for a few days you don't want that to ruin your data so you could exclude that from review as well um and then i've just got one i think final question on oh, a couple of final questions possibly i've got one on the challenges of having accounts that are across multiple platforms um and yeah it it does get a little bit technical here i suppose it one, one of the main challenges if you've got um if you have got multiple google multiple bing and baidu and yahoo campaigns all hooked up then it gets a, a little bit complicated from the, the from the tracking side of things so the the main issue that we encounter is i did mention this very briefly earlier if you've got an analytic setup that is uh incorporating say a, a .co.uk domain and a .com domain, then you can actually only link one of those analytics properties up to search as 360. Um, it's not the end of the world. It just means that you would put, there are some circumstances where you have to default to using the search as 360 innate floodlight tracking instead, um, which depending on kind of your, your dev queue can might involve a little bit of work and, uh, to, to set up and to validate and uh, make sure that, that if it's in kind of an international campaign that currencies are being appropriately handled but floodlight is it, it's a pretty uh, flexible system in itself so we find it works quite well uh, for most of our clients needs um got a question on cost so it's search as 360 something that you pay additional cost for versus normal google ads um yes uh the answer to that is yes it's not a straightforward pricing model 
Um, it tends, it, it works on a bit of a sliding scale. Um, it starts at 2.5% of uh, the search media spend, search and shopping media spend. Um, so if you've got an account that's running a Google Ads account that includes search and shopping and display, you would be charged 2.5% of the search and shopping costs. But that's, um, I suppose that's worst case scenario, that, that percentage does come down depending on how much spend you're putting through. Um, so yeah, it would be uh, 2.5 at the most, but it comes down on a bit of a sliding a slide in scale. If anyone's interested in knowing more about how costs might apply to them, then uh, please follow up with us directly um, after the, the webinar, because it, it does tend to be quite bespoke in terms of how it needs to be set up. So we'd be, we'd be glad to how it might, uh, glad to talk you through how it might work for you. Um, and yeah, I've got a question on whether the machine learning only works with flat products without spikes. Um, which I think is a similar question to the one I've answered already. Um, so yeah, we do have clients where traffic is unpredictable. Um, traffic being unpredictable in itself, I, d I don't think tends to cause too many problems. Um, it's more if conversion rates are quite spiky. And yeah, as I mentioned, there are there are tools that you can use. If you know in advance that conversion rate is likely to spike, then yes, you, that can be taken into account. And after the effect, you can also kind of take it into account in the in the form of um, the black the blacklisting options. Um, certainly, we've used the Google the Search S three sixty bidding um, strategies for many of our clients and it's actually the the primary motivation we find for getting new clients in search as it is to take advantage of the the bidding software and um we've had some really great successes in there we've seen we've, we've had a few really strong case studies out of there so while every client i suppose has its own quirks and challenges on the whole we find it to work really well and i'm not seeing any more questions so i think we will wrap up there for today um, if anyone has any questions later later on then by all means give us a call or you've got our contact details so feel free to email us um, with any any additional questions otherwise we'll wrap it up there for today thank you very much thank you for your time